Have you ever seen the dreaded service worker can't load its script error? Do you wonder why your caches don't seem to work? Well, I'm Sam Dutton, and I'm gonna show you how to debug service workers in Firefox. Firefox has really solid support for debugging PWAs, so let's take it one piece at a time. We'll work in the order that you might create a PWA, creating a service worker, making it work offline, testing that, and then debugging the code, and testing push notifications. We're going to start with this minimal site and build it into a PWA. Now, the code is simple enough, an index.html file, an empty file for the service worker, and the usual CSS. So let's start with registering the service worker. We'll also see what happens when the service worker changes. We'll add the code to register a service worker into the site. If registration fails, this will log the error. Now we can switch to the service worker and add its code. This should look familiar. We're listening for the install and activate events and writing a log message. Make sure to save everything. Now, let's look at what we just did. Notice that there's nothing in the console yet. When I reload the page, you should see two messages in the console. One is the service worker installing, and the other is when it activates. If you see an error, check your install code and the service worker for syntax errors. Firefox has a dashboard that shows all workers, including service workers. We'll get there by going to About Debugging and then clicking on Workers. Now, notice this first section labeled Service Workers. In this case, our source file is serviceworker.js, and the service worker is registered. This also shows that we haven't implemented a fetch handler yet. Well, don't worry, we'll get to that soon. Let's see what happens when we update the service worker with new code. When I switch back to the browser, you can see that nothing has changed yet. It's the same console messages as before. Now, I can reload the page. Look at the console log. The browser saw that the service worker changed and it's being reinstalled. Now, notice that it hasn't been activated yet. The old service worker is hanging on until the next reload. And instead of reloading everything, we can come back to the workers screen and click unregister. This terminates the old worker so the new one can take over. Now you can see the log message showing the new service worker is active. Now, let's see how to pre-cache resources and look at them in the developer tools. We want to cache these files when the service worker installs. Remember that the service worker lives at the root of our site and all of these URLs are relative to the root. Now we can change the install event listener to cache all of the files. Notice that the log message is gone. We will know when this worked by seeing the files in the cache. Now I can reload the site. The call to skip waiting during install makes the new service worker take effect immediately. I cleared the console in case any error messages might pop up. Our service worker installed and activated. Let's take a look at the cache just made. Caches will appear in the storage panel. When I click on the apps one cache, I can see all of the items in it. Before we go on, make sure your service worker is building its cache. If you don't see these files in the cache, check your code and reload the site until they are ready. You can pop over to the Network tab and see the difference between the files loaded by the browser and the ones loaded by the service worker. The Initiator column will show you which is which. If needed, you can delete the old cache before reloading, and you can do this with a right click on the cache name. Or you can use the clear storage option to wipe out everything, including your caches and the current service worker. We have a service worker and it's creating a cache. Now we want to make the app work offline. Remember that we need to add a fetch handler to the service worker. This will intercept network requests and serve them from the cache. This code adds a fetch handler that serves cache first with a network fallback. In other words, the app will use its cache files and only go to the network if something is missing. Let's reload the browser and make sure there are no errors. The workers panel confirms we have an active service worker with a fetch handler. So far, so good. Now we can see if we work offline. There are several ways to take the site offline, including killing the server. But the 
easiest way is in the file menu. All we need to do is select work offline. Firefox will block traffic between your app and the server. I'm going to reload this offline app. Now watch the network panel. The size column indicates which items came from the service worker. So that's enough to give you a basic PWA that works offline. Well, what happens when you need to actually debug something? You may get an error loading the service worker or a runtime error. So let's look at the tools and a couple of the common bugs that you may encounter. To debug a service worker, the worker must already be running. Click on the associated debug button or click start if the worker isn't running yet. This will pop up a new window with the code of the service worker. Here you can do all the usual debugging you would expect, setting breakpoints, step-by-step -step execution, inspecting variables, and so on. You can set a breakpoint in the usual way by clicking in the left margin of the source code, or if you prefer, insert a debugger statement right into your code. Of course, the usual resume and step commands work here. So we've seen most of what you would do in building and debugging a PWA, but I saved one of the most complex things for last, push notifications. There's already a button and code for subscribing to push notifications, but it still needs a push listener. The service worker needs to listen for push events. It then creates a notification object and calls show notification. This notification is wrapped in a promise, so we need to call event.waitUntil to pause until it appears. We have to load the new service worker after making the change, and I'm checking the usual places to make sure it loaded. Now I can click to subscribe. Of course, I have to also give permission to show notifications. Now I can go back to the service worker panel. When I click the button, it sends a push message straight to the service worker without needing a server. Success! So, thanks for listening. Now that you've seen how to debug service workers in Firefox, try it out on your own projects. See the other videos in this series to learn debugging for other browsers, and then come back for more PWA videos.